Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Foxes Abroad, and today I'm going to discuss a little something that's kind of like a state of the union with the uh, the fox body community right now, and it's something that possibly a lot of other people are going to get impacted by this. So, I just got done rebuilding this T5, uh, it's a four cylinder T5, you can tell by the, the size of the small diameter of the input shaft. But internally, it's other than the gear ratios, it's much less like any other world-class T5. Uh, so in order to rebuild this transmission, I needed to get a set of uh, full set of synchronizers for it. Because whoever had it in the past, uh, when we bought it, they filled it with gear oil and it just wiped out all the, the blocker rings. I'm going to use blocker rings and synchronizers kind of interchangeably throughout this just to, to help with the flow. But uh, the synchronizers I'm talking about are these. These are the the three-piece synchros for first gear, second gear, and this is a smattering of uh, third gear and fourth gear synchros. So what is going on is the there are no more first gear, second gear Tremec brand synchronizers available that I can find anywhere. There may be some people selling them at an exorbitant price on eBay, or if you want to spend $650 to buy the Ford Racing full rebuild kit, it'll come with the good synchros in it. But everywhere you try to find those, the good ones, they're not available anywhere. So I went on eBay to order parts for this transmission. I specifically look for the OEM brand ones because they're you know, by far superior to everything else that's out there. So you can tell that they're the genuine Tremec ones. I'll post a picture up here because I don't have any to, examples to show you. The Tremec ones will have like fingers going down around the, the perimeter and the inside diameter of this friction ring. So I ordered off eBay what I thought, what was shown as genuine Tremec synchronizers and what showed up were these ones. They have this carbon fiber weave kind of thing glued to this friction ring. And this isn't designed properly. So, and durability is still questionable compared to the genuine Tremec stuff. So, I was disappointed with what I received. I messaged the seller. They said, oh, well, if you don't like them, you could just send them back. You know, I, just trying to play it off like suitable substitutes were, were no big problem like they're uh, selling because these are a lot cheaper than the genuine Tremec ones the genuine Tremec ones a few months ago when you could buy them I can get them for 90 bucks a piece and now you can't get them anymore you can find these three piece ones for 60 to 70 dollars a piece they sent me the cheaper ones in the place of the good ones, and they still charged me the full on price for them. So I sent them back, got my money back, and I went and ordered a second set off of a different vendor, off not off eBay, because all I was finding on eBay at that point was these cheaper synchronizers. And so another vendor did the same thing. They showed the pictures of the Tremec branded ones, even in their little notes underneath the, the item descriptions, said, you will get shipped the actual items in the picture. Well, the act, when it came time for me two weeks later here overseas that I got the synchronizers, these cheap ones, again, were substituted instead of the genuine Tremec ones. So I was about blowing a gasket when, I, when it happened a second time. So I went and I paid more money the second time to get the genuine ones and I still got the cheap ones so I paid more money for the cheap ones in the end and wasted several weeks of time so I was really fuming because now what am I do so the thing that it's not just I'm a <clears throat> I'm a Tremec parts junkie or that I only use Tremec brand parts no matter what it's just these don't fit in your transmission so what is going on? I have a, a first gear here set up. This is a worn out synchronizer right here. So if you flip them over, you can kind of see that the inner ring on this one is standing a little proud. 
of the middle ring and the outer ring. So that means the friction material inside here has worn out beyond its uh, serviceable life. So if you take this and flip it over on this, uh, this gear, and you put it together, if I can show you, there is no air gap between this ring and the gear. I'm going to pull it apart a little bit. If you can maybe see light shining through there a little bit. But uh, it's hard, really hard to see. So I even tried to, to check the tolerances. I have a you know feeler gauge here. It was like 0.0015. This is the thinnest shim I have. And you can't get in here and uh, I can barely squeak it in. Well, there it's getting stuck. So, yeah, it's, if I installed this back in the transmission, it would, uh, it wouldn't shift very well at all. You would start, a lot of times you'll take transmissions apart, and on top of this ring you'll see it getting shiny here from starting to rub on the gear surfaces. This is for first and second, and you'll start showing some wear. So, this is a, a good used synchro it's not a carbon fiber one it is an early one with like the this is almost like automatic transmission clutch material is what this stuff is so but this is still good but it's all i have right now and all i can get so if you take this one and you flip it upside down on here so you can hopefully see that there is an air gap between this outer ring and the gear so that means there's plenty of friction material left on this blocker ring for suitable use and I measured it with my feeler gauges there's like 47 thousandths of a gap between this and the gear perfectly acceptable that's almost new condition but then we get to this replacement carbon fiber one and you can kind of tell right from the start that there's a lot of meat here but I believe it is because this outer ring is not machined correctly. Because these two rings are lower than this outer ring. Instead of like this one being flat across all three of the rings across the top here. So when you put this together and you measure the thickness, it measured out at 63 thousandths of an air gap. So well, you can see the air gap's even kind of bigger. But what that does, if I take this and I install it on this mock-up shaft here for another transmission I'm building, and you put it together, drop it in, get my little pointer, and the top of this ridge here, or this flange, is where this input bearing race or first gear bearing race sits and it is perfectly flat across the top to this inner ring and what that does is it prevents you having any air gap for this gear to float on the shift fork pads so it's always if I would install this synchro on first gear and the same synchro on second gear when I put this together I can't turn these gears. Once I put this all together, put the snap ring in place, it is very difficult to turn these gears because these synchros are dragging. So if I would assemble this transmission and put it in a car and run it, the, the friction of these dragging would probably smoke these two synchros within minutes. So because they would just drag and drag and drag and drag and get too hot and they would fail. So because there's no room because they're too these synchros are too fat so <sighs> this synchro is manufactured by a company called Synchrotech, and you can look them up online and these are all that's available right now because talking to Hanlon Motorsports you know I just bought a bunch of stuff from them I bought a whole big bulk pack of shift fork pads and I was trying to get a hold of the Tremec synchros and they have none to, to sell 
either they're they're keeping some for themselves which i don't blame them or their the supply is completely exhausted and they said this is something that's been happening for two years now so about a year ago somebody came out with some some replacements but there was a problem with them and they didn't elaborate what it was but uh they were not able to be used and i don't know if they just all got scrapped or what or or these or what those were and they they sucked or something but so for two years the supplies tremec has stopped producing them because they're just going full boogie on whatever else they're doing for OEMs or the TKX aftermarket stuff. T5, they're kind of going to the wayside as far as spare parts and replacements from them. And uh, so the supply as of now, as far as I know, is has been exhausted for the first gear and second gear synchros. So if you have them, hoard them, <laughs> you got what you got until somebody in the aftermarket or Tremec comes back out and releases new good ones to the community. I rebuild these transmissions a lot of times for people and uh, as of now I'm gonna have to put that on hold because I can't get good replacement parts. Uh, hopefully the community or some aftermarket agency will step up to the plate and bring out some good synchros or else we're gonna be hurting here for a good while if you got a T5 and you need to rebuild it unless you're gonna be buying a $650 for racing rebuild kit and I I remember buying those for 250 bucks and uh, that's it's nearly tripled so anyways that's the uh, that is a rant on vendors selling cheap junk I don't know what to tell you other than uh, keep a, keep an eye out if you find some good synchros snap them up because it's all you're gonna have for a while anyway this transmission's done for a buddy Put a Stita Triax shifter on it. I adjusted the stops. We just got an old handle knob for him. But this is going to be going in his. Uh, <laughs> he literally has a four cylinder 77 Cobra 2 Mustang over here in the UK. So it'll be kind of a neat upgrade for him. It's going from a, a four speed to a five speed. So I'll probably feature that here at some point. And the uh, rest of the garage doings uh, the non world class T5 and bell housing stuff is sold. This was easy to rebuild because it's just got the brass uh, brass blocker rings in it. <laughs> so it was cheap and easy. It was shipped to me as not world class. I don't even think the, the seller knew it was not world class. But if it was a world class, I wouldn't have been able to rebuild it because I couldn't get the synchros. So <laughs> kind of good and bad in a way. But And if you know, I also imported two uh, short block 302s to rebuild. So if you look, you can see I got two oil pans full of parts, two cranks, one of the blocks is not here. Well, here is some pictures of that block. So <laughs> I started taking it apart and I, you know, I put a breaker bar and a big cam bolt on the end of the crank and went to turn it over because every this these blocks were left out in Florida for a while so they had some surface rust on all the bores and well to make sure it could turn over I started turning over here and I heard crunching sounds well the uh, cam bearing got lodged in the rotating assembly bent itself up and then it fell out the bottom so I couldn't really see what was going on because the other engine had a lot of black uh, oil and carbon in it so I looked and looked looked a little closer and you saw all the cracks in the main webs so cracked across uh, two three and four main webs uh, backwards but so that block is scrap total scrap bought it transported it to a shipping to my buddy's house from my buddy's house to a shipping freight forwarder over the Atlantic brought it up here I probably spent three times as much in shipping the thing and importing it than it did for me to purchase the engine itself the block itself all I wanted was the metal of the block so I could build something because they're hard to get here in the United Kingdom and uh, it ends up being a big pile of scrap so that was just a, a huge huge downer and I don't know got the second block apart it's good shape uh, I'll be able to build this one up nice. I ran a little flex hole, diggle ball hone through the lifters just to make sure they clean up. So this is all going to get 30 over. 
or 20 over, whichever I kind of prefer, but I got to just do a little bit more de-rusting on it. And, but it is a good builder, so I'll be playing with this soon. We're playing with the 2.3 turbo in a bit. I got this T5 to put back together here soon, as soon as I get a good first gear. This first gear is a little bit too worn out for for my tastes. There is one on the way. It's taken long, a long time, but that's what's going on. So if you stuck with me for all this ranting and talking, I appreciate you. Thanks for sticking with me, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon in the next video.